Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. Hey, I just wanted to give a quick thanks to one of our sponsors at Simple Programmer, which is Dev Mountain Bootcamp. You should go check them out. The link is in the description. They are a coding bootcamp and they can teach you web development, iOS development, UX design, a lot of good stuff. I get a lot of feedback from a lot of you out there that email me and have told me about Dev Mountain, so I decided to check them out myself. And I, I like what I found. I like their programs. They offer uh, some 12 week intensive programs. They also offer some after hours programs, which I know that some of you will like. So go check them out you can see the link in the description below dev mountain bootcamp and a big thank you to them for sponsoring simple programmer so i got a question about learning pre-written code so someone's code base that you're already that you're coming into that already exists this is a problem for a lot of developers because hey most of the time you don't get to work on a greenfield project you got to work on some existing code so this question is from darius and he says i just switched careers from electronics tech slash support specialist to a java developer i'm finding it hard to follow my employer's code when doing customer modifications for customers when doing I think he means custom modifications for customers. They create their own libraries and I'm finding it hard to get the concept of what they're doing, especially when there are very limited comments in the code. So he says, uh, what is the best approach I can make towards learning my new employer's code and becoming a better asset to the team? So I'll give you a couple of tips here. So the, the first thing I would say is that if you've got an employer like a code base where they have a custom framework, right? You can't go out and you can't buy a book on it. You can't watch videos on it, right? Maybe there's some internal training or documents, but most of the time when I, I look at those, they're, they're pretty outdated, right? It's, it's, it doesn't actually match what the actual new architecture or framework is because that stuff doesn't really stay up to date. People don't usually update that stuff. So here's what I would suggest. This is, I think, the best way to learn learn the code base and to learn how the framework and architecture works. First of all, go and fix some bugs, okay? Look for problems. There's always a bug database, right? I mean, no, no software is perfect. So go and, and, and find some real simple bugs to fix and you'll go through and you'll be debugging, right? So for example, let's say that you've got this, this your employer has this framework and it's got you know, a front end part of it, like a UI part of it. And then it's got like a middleware type of part where it has a business logic and then some, some code that goes to the database. Well, if you can find a bug where there's some problem on the front end, like maybe some data from the database isn't displaying correctly. That's a great one because you can follow that data all the way through and you can see how it's supposed to get to the front end, right? And so if you fix that bug, you'll get some experience doing that. So that's step one is start fixing bugs and you'll see how the framework is working, how the objects get created, what how data gets passed through the system because that's all the framework is going to be doing you know any kind of custom framework is going to be doing that somehow it's going to be making it easier to to pass the data either back and forth or either up or down right that's that's the basic functionality of, of a system so start fixing bugs next after you start fixing some bugs start adding like in, it doesn't have to be features that you that go directly into the code base right but on your own could you say well what if i wanted to create a new field here on this this customer information uh, form right what if I wanted to create a new field how would I do that and just on your own local machine in your own local code base figure out how to create a new field right just use the examples that are there and follow it all the way through figure out all the steps if you do that see th this is where you'll really start to learn their framework and code base is because you will have an example already because let's say that you you add a middle name field and there's already a first name and last name you could go through and you could literally look at and see how first name is implemented and you could see it at the top layer at the front end layer you could see it at the middle layer you could see it back in the database and you can go and you can implement all that and see how that framework is working so that's that's really the best way to do this going and studying the code base and trying to figure it out that way not good, right? You're not going to remember stuff. You're not going to know what's important. Even stepping through in the debugger if you don't have a purpose, right? I always say that if you're trying to learn something, you need to have a why. Like, why are you trying to learn it? So a lot of people tell me all the time, hey, John, I'm, I'm trying to learn this, this programming language or this framework. Or I'm watching all these Pluralsight courses. And my answer is always, why? What, what are you trying? I'm trying to learn X so I can do Y. And so when you approach it this way, when you do it so that you say, okay, I'm going to solve this bug or I'm going to create this new field 
field or I'm going to create this new functionality in the application and then you're learning the code base and then you're learning the framework, it's so that you can actually implement what you're trying to do, whether it be fixing the bug, whether it be adding a new field or adding some new functionality to the application and that's how you're going to learn it better than anything else. And once you go through that, right, and you're doing that w under your own guided, you know, really that, you could call that deliberate practice, right? There's a real good book on deliberate practice uh, called Peak. You can, you can check out that book here. I just finished reading that book. Really, really good. But it, 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 that will give you some ideas on how to figure out these exercises for yourself, you know, to figure out how could you actually train yourself to become better at something that there's not really any training for, a custom framework like that. All right, I hope that helps you. Uh, if, it, if it does, <laughs> then click that, uh, that subscribe button so you can get all the videos I do. To, I do about two to three videos a day. And uh, as always, you can email me if you have a question you'd like me to answer. I can't answer all the questions, but I, I answer a lot of them. You can email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.